first talk for Demo Day, our Medicine 2024. Uh, today, I wanted to talk about the R Consortium's R based test submission package for FDA evaluation. Uh, this is definitely a milestone and a new frontier in R based regulatory submissions for us. Uh, and the demonstration I'll be going through today is the installation and execution of the submission package, which we've submitted to the FDA for review. Again, this is all R-based, uh, and uh, so far, so good. We've, we've gotten good news from the FDA reviewers, and they were able to run it themselves. Uh, and essentially, what I wanted to show here today is how they would have done it uh, if uh, following the instructions that we've uh, sent in the analysis data reviewer's guide of a clinical trial submission package. All right, so yeah, before I go on to the demo, I thought I'd give a quick introduction to myself. Uh, my name is Joelle Loxamana. I work at Genentech, a member of the Roche Group. I've been there for over 10 years now. Uh, I'm in the data science group, uh, working on clinical trials um, as a statistical programmer. Uh, we changed our title recently to anal analytical data scientist. Um, but other than work, I love being outdoors. I do a little singing, music, exercising. It's always good to exercise after COVID. It's, it's been rough. Um, and of course, getting together with, with family and friends, always a good time. Uh, so I definitely enjoy that. All right. So yeah, before I go into the demo, I thought I'd kind of give a background of the, uh, the R Consortium, our submission working group, overview of the pilots, um, some of the open source language based submission, FDA uh, submission to the FDA and the challenges that were initially faced and how this working group is trying to overcome those challenges. Uh, and then I'll go through the, the pilot three demonstration on how to install and execute the submission package, which we submitted. So just a bit of background on uh, clinical trial work, uh, usually when uh, a drug seems to work, there's efficacy, good safety. Uh, the next step is usually then to submit all of the work you've done, showing the efficacy of the drug. Uh, and through this, usually we, in the US, will submit to the FDA. So uh, background of, of regulatory submissions to health authorities, you know, approval of a treatment, sponsors will submit a, a very comprehensive package of materials, health authorities to evaluate the product's efficacy and safety. Though we've shown it, um, that the FDA would like to review all that, in which case we include all the reports that we made, data sets we've generated for the reports, all the, the software programs, including the R programs uh, or SAS programs. Um, in this case, we'll focus on R. Uh, in addition to the reviewing the reports, um, what we'd also like to, the FDA reviewers to be able to do or any other health, uh, health authorities in the future uh, when we do submit packages to them if needed, uh, we want them to be able to uh, install what we've done and reproduce our analyses from the programs uh, in the package that we've submitted. Uh, so this is when we we submit the code, all the independent programming that we've done. Um, sometimes they do their own independent ind independent programming based on our analysis specifications to ensure that we're we are indeed getting the same results uh, as them. Um, proprietary software has been widely used um, due to reproducibility and quality considerations. Um, you know, in, in the field that we're in, this industry, SAS has been a major player uh, in that software and, and when, where we did a lot of work using that. Um, but in recent years, there's definitely increasing interest in embracing open source software. Uh, there is a lot of savings in that, of course, uh, going to open source software where those those savings can then be transferred back to the patients who we deliver these treatments to. So this is essentially a, the, the R Consortium R Submission Working Group. It's, it's definitely a cross-industry collaboration uh, between many companies within the industry. Um, I myself, I am from Roche, but in the pilots that we worked in. We definitely have colleagues in Johnson & Johnson, uh, Bayer, GSK that I worked with, Merck, uh, and so on and so forth in, in past pilots, I'm sure, in the, the submissions working group. And we definitely work closely with the FDA. There are FDA reviewers in the R Consortium whom we work with and consult uh, very routinely on any questions you may have as we've generated this R submission package. 
Uh, and so, yeah, just kind of give you a story and background of all the pilots that we've done for the R Consortium R Submission Working Group. Um, for pilot one, pilot one was a team that first submitted the uh, an R Submission package where they mainly focused on submitting R scripts to generate outputs, which is tables, listings, and figures. Um, with that also, there are some, uh, I wanna say pilot one specific functions that were needed to generate these outputs called in these R scripts where they gener they created a somewhat of a package in their, uh, in their work area. Uh, they packed it up using package light for the, uh, the, the submission to the FDA. And the source analysis data which we used uh, were analysis data models uh, coming from a publicly available CDIS Pilot 1 study. Um, links to those can be found here in the, in, you know, with the QR codes to each of the pilots. So this was the very first Pilot 1 submission that I was aware of coming into the R Consortium R Submission Working Group. Everything ran successfully on the FDA's end. Uh, and so with that, Pilot 1 then evolved into Pilot 2 where they wanted to see if they would be able to submit a shiny application based on the pilot one results and data that were used. So essentially they took the programs from pilot one, implemented it into our shiny application, generating the same TLFs. Uh, but of course in a shiny application, they'll be in different modules uh, and showing the tables there, being able to implement filters uh, to subset the data to see results in different ways uh, much quicker rather than static outputs done in pilot one. Again, the same source data used there uh, was the CDIS pilot one source uh, atom data. Um, the pilot one wrappers, again, was a proprietary package for pilot one. The pilot two wrappers, wrappers package was a proprietary package for pilot two. For the most part, these packages were essentially the same since they were generating the same outputs but I think we just renamed it Pilot2 wrappers just to ensure that it was part of the Pilot2 package. Now, moving on to Pilot3, which is a pilot that I was a part of, uh, I want to say that Pilot3 was actually more of a spin-off of Pilot1. So in addition to submitting R scripts for the tables, listings, and figures, Pilot3 was more focused on actually generating the Atom data sets in R using um, Farmerverse open source packages, uh, one of them called Admiral. Uh, there are other packages in the Farmerverse that we use as well to generate these atoms, which I'll, I can share with you during the, uh, the demo. So in pilot three, again, we, we focusing on the atoms, what we did was we, we created our scripts for five atom data sets, which were the source atom data sets, which to generate the TLF outputs from pilot one. So in this Pilot3 submission package, we do have the Atom programs, which source the CDIS Pilot1 SDTM data to generate the Atom programs. So in this, we have the Atom scripts from Pilot3, as well as the TLF scripts from Pilot1. And in our package, we also uh, generated a Pilot3 utils proprietary package where uh, different from pilot one and pilot two, where when they submitted their proprietary package, they used a package called package light. Uh, package light is able to grab all the package R scripts uh, from the R package in GitHub, put it in a big text file, then un uh, where the FDA can then take it and then unwrap it and unpack it to run the, uh, the study specific functions there. Where the difference in Pilot3, we actually took the proprietary package, renamed it to Pilot3 Utils, and we actually submitted it as a zip file. Um, currently in ECTD structure, which is what we have to usually submit uh, submission packages uh, in, this is the electronic common technical document. Um, this is just a quick link to that, uh, which I could share later, but it gives guidance on the, the structure of the, the submission package that we have to submit to the FDA when they get it uh, to ensure that everything is in, in standard uh, structure for them to be able to, to grab and navigate through um, to what they're used to and easily review uh, the submission package. Um, 
with the zip file that we did for the proprietary package, um, currently right now, the, the specifications for ECTD actually does not really talk about zip for our packages. Um, so this is kind of a new frontier for us in pilot three, where we want to, in this pilot, we want to see if we can experiment submitting proprietary packages using zip files. Uh, and that way, any specific functions that we have for a study, um, if we do have to submit it to the FDA, they could also rerun it on their end by being able to install the package from a zip file. And again, I'll show you that in a demo. Um, and then going to pilot four, this is currently another pilot in progress where taking all of this work, uh, they're exploring the use of novel technologies as Linux containers and WebAssembly to bundle uh, currently the Shiny application and see if then those containers can be submitted and then re-executed on the FDA side. So this is kind of the, an overview of the pilots and the objectives that we've done in the R Consortium Our Submission Working Group. Before I move on, um, I'd like to be able to interact with everyone. If so if anyone has any questions as I'm talking about anything, feel free to, to let me know. Just unmute yourself or raise your hand. All right, so since my focus was on the pilot three project uh, for this working group, um, these were the essentially the key evaluation aspects we wanted for the um, for us, the submitter to do. Uh, we wanted to be able to install and load the proprietary R package, pilot three utils from a zip file and run all of the Atom and TLS scripts, which we do have in this repo for, uh, publicly available for everyone to see. Uh, we also wanted to ensure that the preparation of the R-based submission materials uh, were also in line with uh, standard submissions, in which case the analysis data reviewers guide <clears throat> was a big document for us to ensure that all the steps that the FDA uh, needed to run to install and execute our package were detailed in here. Um, so once they received our package, we also expected that the FDA staff were again were able to re re reproduce the atoms uh, corresponding to the analysis results uh, by installing our proprietary package, the Pilot3 utils, um, in which case they should have been able to open that package along with other packages we've used in the project, uh, where we collected the specific versions of this package using another package called RENV. Uh, our environment. Uh, and then we hope that after they ran that, they were able to then execute all of the Atom scripts and TLS scripts as instructed in the ADRG. Uh, and again, this is the team that we worked with in Pilot 3. So definitely a cross industry collaboration going on here. Uh, Rose, Shane, Jay, Senos, Moderna, GSK, and Anita. All right, so this was what was in scope for Pilot 3. Again, we sourced SDTM data coming from the CDIS Pilot 1 available data. Uh, this is all simulated data from a very, very old clinical trial, I believe, <clears throat> where the focus on this pilot was to generate the atoms using R, and then with those atoms, we would source them into the TLF programs from Pilot 1, uh, see if we can generate the same results as they did. Uh, these were the five atoms that we generated. And then the out of the TLFs, there were three tables and one graph, one figure. Uh, in the ESA package, we have the modules M1, module one, where it does have a cover letter, a report TLF. Uh, and then the M5, this is essentially the structure of the data and, and the programs in which we sent to the FDA. <clears throat> Uh, here are the SDTM under the tabulations folder, uh, and then under analysis is where we saved all of the final analysis data sets, and then the programs in which that uh, generated those atom data sets. And we also did include the TLF programs, uh, and those were then generating the outputs, which again we put in this report TLF pilot 3 PDF.
So with all the work that we did in pilot three, kind of getting the the submission package together for all the, the clinical trials, we were luckily able to submit uh, this package on August 28, 2023. Uh, this is the announcement for that, which you can um, find through this QR code. Um, and initially when we did submit this, we did do things in, with different methods. Um, we also did get feedback from the FDA in which we wanted to correct and fix, uh, in which case after correcting those um, or updating the pilot three package with the feedback from the FDA, we did then resubmit on April 19th of 2024, uh, again, using the method of the, the proprietary package being submitted as a zip file. Um, and so far, the, the FDA, again, have given feedback that they were able to run this approach, uh, which is great news for us. Again, frontiering a new way of uh, submitting uh, open source open source work. <clears throat> so if you want to see the final submission folder for Pilot 3, uh, this is, again, following the ECTD structure. We do have the link here, uh, in which case this is what I will use to collect our programs and data so that we could run it uh, in the, the following demo. So yeah, so now I think I can move on to the demonstration. So the demonstration again is um, the installation and execution of the submission package following section nine of the pilot three ADRG. Uh, but yeah, but before I move on to the demonstration, does anyone have any questions on the background that I just shared? Right, right. So what I'll do is I'll move on to the demonstration. Let me exit out of here. I will then go to the ADRG. Grab that for us really quick. Go. Just opening it in another window and I'll bring it down shortly. I do apologize. I did have it open this morning and it is not reopening now. Oh, here we go. Hmm. All right. So this is what the <clears throat> Pilot 3 ADRG looks like. Uh, this essentially is the analysis data reviewer's guide. Uh, we followed the template coming from Pinnacle 21. Pinnacle 21 is a conformance tool to ensure that the analysis data sets and analysis specs meet conformance before we do submit to the FDA. Um, and then this is the template we use. And again, we're going to go to section nine to follow the installation process of the Pilot 3 package. So let's go ahead and go there. If I click on it, it should take us there. There we go. Uh, so yeah, so for for those online, I, I know it may be hard to to follow this as it it does take a little longer to go through the installation and execution process uh, as a number of packages you have to install in order to run these programs will definitely take more than the the top of the hour that we have. Um, so the you'll see when I run these things that I, I did have m many of the packages installed already, so the, the steps will go quickly. Uh, but on your end, when I share this, um, you should be able to follow uh, these instructions still uh, and run them accordingly as I'm doing today. Um, but again, we'll just take longer if you don't have packages installed already. So the Pilot 3 installation and usage, um, th this is again the first step uh, which we gave the FDA to once they've downloaded the submission package that we've submitted to them. 
so the first thing we do is um, uh, what I do actually is is go to R. So this is R itself. <clears throat> uh, R is connected to my documents folder. So if I go to my Explorer windows on my computer, um, so yeah, everything in the, the documents folder is essentially then uh, so the same folders you see here. So with the first step, uh, what we'll do is just create a folder called pilot3. Which is right here. So then going here, we now see pilot three in our explorer window. Uh, and then what we're going to do now is we are going to go to the FD, the FDA submission repo in which we kept all of our submission package information in. So this is the repo where we finalized our submission package to the FDA, uh, where then the repo was taken uh, and then kind of put together in a folder and sent to the FDA portal. Uh, so what I'll do here is uh, kind of emulate the submission uh, of the to the FDA portal. I am now the receiver as acting uh, FDA reviewer. Um, coming through the portal, let's say I've downloaded then the, the package that came in. So what I'm doing is just going in this repo, clicking on code, and then downloading everything in here as a zip. We can see that it is there now. So if I go to my downloads folder, which is here. And this is just proof that we did download it right now. So on my clock, you see here, uh, it's June 12, 722. And this is the last modified. So this is what we're unpacking uh, and then executing. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and just unpack this. Uh, I use a 7-zip to unpack it. Or after extracting it and unpacking it, we then see our M1 and M5. So going back to our steps here, uh, it says then to kind of to bring the M1 and M5 um, in a folder. Uh, in this case, I call it the pilot three files. So essentially this pilot three example here is to is to emulate the downloads folder. So if you were to first download it, uh, I, I would put in a pilot three. And then I would create another pilot three files folder where I would keep the unpacked M1 and M5. So let's go ahead and do that just to ensure that I'm following the instructions. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch this to pilot three files instead. <clears throat> so going back here, I'm gonna take the M1 and M5 and go ahead and copy this and bring it to documents and put it into the pilot three files demo folder. Let me go ahead and paste that. There we go. Let's move this to the side. We'll go back to R and go back to the instruction. All right, so now we see here, as shown in this image capture, in the pilot three files folder, we do now have the M1 and the M5. <clears throat> And as we're running analyses and running through the, the clinical trial study work, um, it, it's good to make mention of the R version that you used, as well as even the R Studio version, which is hosting your, your R version. Uh, so we gave these links of the FDA to ensure that they are using the same R version and R Studio version that we were, just to ensure that we had exact repro reproducibility on their end. Um, and sometimes, you know, our packages do run on certain versions of R, so we wanted to make sure as well that the packages that were installed did run on the correct Windows version, which we needed them to run it on. All right, so now that I have R already open, I'll select File, New Project. I need to have...
Let's bring this down here as there's a bar up here, which is covering. Some of the space. Um, so I'm going to go um, file new project. I'm going to go into the existing directory, which is now the pilot three files folder, which we've set up. Go ahead and create project here. Uh, we'll ignore the update again because we want to ensure that we're using the RStudio version, which I've already set up here per the instructions in the ADRG. All right, so now that we've created the pilot three files package, this is what it now looks like. And going back to our instructions here, you just confirm what we generated. <clears throat> And throughout the instruction, we did put notes here, uh, which if you know a lot of our users know who worked on different projects. Um, this may or may not be visible. It could be in a hidden folder, but it's it's absolutely fine and not necessary to run the analyses programs. Uh, the next step now is to actually install all of the R packages we used to be able to run the Atom programs and the TLF programs. So in the files window pane, uh, what we want to do is ensure that this directory has these two files, which is the renvlock.txt, and then the pilot3utils, which is our proprietary package we submitted as a zip. Uh, you see here that the renvlock uh, is in a txt because when submitting through the uh, FDA portal, um, they are not able to accept .lock extensions per the specifications. So we just did a, a quick um, workaround where we just added a dash lock.txt so that it would go through the FDA portal uh, just fine without any issues. Uh, but eventually what we'll do is rename that so that it works as an actual uh, lock file. All right, so this is again uh, us going through these files, ensuring that we do have these two uh, files in the folder. So let's go ahead and do that. So it is in the M5 datasets analysis atom programs. And sure enough, these are the files that we want to install all of the R packages which we use in this project and with this within the specific versions. And then the proprietary package which we installed uh, or generated and submitted as a dot zip. So next step after ensuring that that's there as we do want to install the remotes package. I'll go ahead and copy that and run that really quick. Right, that ran successfully. Again, we do have further notes here in the case. Um, you do run this on your own, there could be um, some errors or warnings that pop up, uh, in which case these notes should help fix those and resolve those going through it. All right. The next piece now is to actually install then the RN package so that we could run the lock file. Copy. Uh, again, we're we're calling version seventeen because this is the the version that we're using at the time of our uh, generation of the project and running the analyses. All right, so this is done. Now that that's done, we can go ahead and move forward with the installation of the packages. Uh, one of the things I do want to make sure is that we are pointing to our project directory. Just do a quick check of that, in which we are, which is our pilot three files right here. Uh, now what we're going to do is actually move the rent block to the root project directory so then we could use it as it's 
uh, function should be as a lock file. And then we're going to rename it as such. So I'm going to go ahead and move it. Right here is the project directory. Is now gone from here. So if we go back here, we see the rend-lock.txt. And then we're going to rename it so that it's an actual .lock file. You can see I've already done that step. So yeah, this is again coming from this area, rem-lock.txt, and then now in the project uh, folder ram, as rem-lock. Um, so all of these steps here are detailed in the ADRG, which I just did in the demo right now. Uh, so I'll go ahead and keep moving. Did navigate to pilot three files, and then you just saw me rename it to rem.lock. All right, and with that setting, it's always good to just restart the R session. So go ahead and do that. And now with Renv installed, we're going to go ahead and initialize it so that we can then get the lock file going to help us restore the project and install the packages that we need. So let me go ahead and run Renv in it. And the selection that we want is one. Since we do have a locked file, we want to restore the project from that locked file. Uh, there are notes here to say that if you're running Rem for the first time, there could be a welcome message that comes up. Uh, select yes. Uh, and then after selecting option one, you may even receive another warning uh, of error downloading, um, where then there are some resolutions here if you do run into these issues, um, in which case, instead of selecting option one, you would run option three instead. Uh, this will activate the project without taking a snapshot of any packages. Um, this warning like this may show up where then the fix for that would just be to update your R profile, which is usually auto-executed uh, and adding, it's ensuring these two lines are set. Um, for some users, the download file method could be curl. Um, for others, it may need libcurl or libcurl. Uh, so this is what worked for me initially. And after I set this, then everything ran fine. So this is what the .R profile update looks like. Um, but let me show you now uh, I don't have the .R profile at this time because I've yet to initialize the project. So let me go ahead and do that here. So again, the, the first step here is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to select one so that we can restore the project. Um, for me, this works. But again, if it doesn't, then follow the, the selection three route. Uh, you can see now it's taking the, the lock file, installing all the packages we need based on that REM block. Quickly open that for you. Um, so again, the R version we need, and these are again all the listed packages which we used, uh, which also include uh, any dependent packages that the primary packages uh, are calling on. All right. Great. So for me, selection one actually ran okay. Uh, and with that, after it restored the project, you can see now that I do have an R profile. Um, but if you select selection three, it will initiate or activate the project and it will give you a .R profile, where then in that .R profile, you'd update it and include the, that libcurl, libcurl download method line. Um, that should work if you do run into that issue. All right, so in this case, uh, selection one did work for me. I was able to run and install all the packages needed. Um, again, these were all preloaded for me, which is why it ran so quickly. But if they're not loaded or not installed for you, this may take some time to actually run so that you can reproduce the analyses we did in pilot three. All right, um, so uh, automatically it seems to have restarted the R session for us. 
uh, it does see that the pilot three project files again is reloaded and that we do have an out of sync uh, REM status here. Uh, so let's take a look at the status. And if you guys have worked with RN before, uh, what RM does is actually it it looks through all of any .r programs within your project, uh, and then views any packages that you've listed to install or load, uh, ensures that you do have it installed. So you can see here that ours was at a sync because I have yet to install the Pilot Three Utils package. This is known by Ren because after you know reading through the .r programs in our project, uh, we do have some programs calling this package, but because we don't have it installed, installed, Ren is saying that it's it's out of sync and we need to install it. All right, so that is actually the next step in the ADRG to do. Uh, whereas I've mentioned before, the Pilot Three Utils package. is in a dot zip. So let's go ahead and go to that. So yeah, so I just wanted to make sure I'm curbing the steps here. Um, upon completion of installing the packages using REM, please restart your session. So we've already installed all the package using RN and the R session has been restarted. Uh, and yeah, just I, as I, I spoke to, uh, after restarting the session, um, the REM status will show that the only package uninstalled is pilot three. And this is now the, these are the steps now to get these installed. All right. So as noted, um, again, this, the pilot three utils package is in a zip file in our programs folder. So the easiest way to install that is actually just to go to packages in your window pane and then install. Then a new window will pop up called install packages. Where the repository will install from, we'll change it to a .zip dropdown selection. Uh, and then the name of the packages should come up, I believe, as pilot three. So let's go ahead and go through these steps here. So we're going to go to package. I'm going to go to install. I'm going to go to package archive .zip, where then it takes us to opening where the, that dot zip package is. So again, we know that it's in pilot three, files, M5, data sets, name of the study, our consortium pilot three, analysis, Adam, and then programs. And here's the dot zip, which we're gonna unzip to open our proprietary package. So I'm gonna go ahead and click open here, select it, click open. You can see that it's uh, pointing to this area now. The install to library section, this piece we can leave as default. However, your, your REN library is set up automatically once you install REN. This is where then uh, the package will be installed in. All right, so this is a, a quick run, of course. So you can see Pilot3 util successfully impact and is installed. So these are the steps that we just went through. Yeah, and this is just a note, um, the installation process using the .zip, um, the dropdown option for .zip for Windows installation does work if you're working locally, though um, throughout the, the pilot project, when we were working on it, we were we were working on the uh, posit cloud. So it was a in a Linux system, in which case this option was not available. But through consultation with the FDA, they mentioned that the way they review things is on a local computer, in which case we wanted to ensure that we were able to emulate that on our end. So then when they went through these steps, they could run it uh, on their local computers. All right. So we already went through these steps, installed the Pilot3 utils. And now we're getting we're getting pretty close now to then being able to just rerun all of our Atom data sets and all of our TLFs. But before we do that, um, all of these programs are set to run within the M1 and M5 structure, like so. So we want to ensure that we set the paths 
that the programs are reading to ensure that it's sourcing the data from the right place uh, and the metadata that's needed to run the, the programs. So um, before executing, uh, this is uh, some of the steps that we told that we asked the FDA reviewers to do. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that as well. Uh, so we're, we're going to go navigate to this analysis folder. This is M1, M5, data sets. Here's the analysis folder. Uh, we're going to take... Yes? I think that's nor normal. Right, let me see if I can mute. Okay. All right. So yeah, let me um let me go ahead and copy the Adam folder and set it to Adam Reviewer. So click on Adam. Copy. I'll rename this to Adam Reviewer. Just to give a background on why I'm doing this. Um, so when we submit the package, the, the, the original Atom folder does have the original data sets we ran, but by making a copy, this ensures that when the reviewer reruns our scripts and regenerates the atoms, that they're not overriding the original Atom data sets, which we generated. Uh, so this is where then the Atom reviewer folder is where then the reviewer from the FDA will execute the rest of the, uh, the programs. So I already did all these copy steps for you. Again, I know a lot of these steps are are, are pretty basic, but in these um, submission packages, we want to make sure that we're very clear and concise and that they're able to follow every step to be able to execute our analyses. Um, so in the same location, now that we have Atom Reviewer, in the same location, we also want to create a folder called Output. And of course, this is where when they run the TLF programs, those outputs will be stored in this folder. So I'm going to go ahead and go here, create a new folder, call that output. Right. So lastly, um, now is then to set the path for all of the data uh, sourcing the SDTM. Uh, and as well as the atoms, where it's going to source a, a new area called uh, data or atom reviewer data sets. This is where then the atoms will be regenerated when we re execute the programs. And then the output, as I mentioned, all the TLF programs that will run will output the outputs in this folder. So, what I'm going to do is actually copy this code. Run that. Just run it in a script here really quick. A little blank space here that I have to fix. There we go. So a quick run of that now gives us all the paths. And let me just show you why we set it up this way. Because when you run ADSL, for instance, All these programs are set to these lists. So the path atom would then point to this atom directory. Uh, path SETM will point to this SDTM directory. And then the output programs in the CLF demographic, for instance, we do a quick search for that. We'll go to path output and then save it accordingly uh, with these file names. All right, so now that we have this and this is run, all the paths should be set. 
we all, we have all of our R packages and the correct versions that we need. Uh, we then pretty much reproduce the R environment in which we need to then run the actual analyses. And just going through those steps, I think were one of the you know one of the main barriers going to open source uh, submitting to the FDA. But now that we're able to show that we can go through these steps and set up the environment in the way that we did when we generated the analyses, this should then allow them to execute the analyses in that same respect. So essentially now all we have to do is go to Atom Reviewer, Programs, ADSL, uh, and run all these programs in this order. Once all of these data sets are ready, <clears throat> let me see. Going back to the TLF program, I want to note again, we are sourcing the Atom data that is coming from the data sets which we will generate after we run the programs. So it's not going to source the Atom data which we already generated. We're going to first generate the Atom data sets and then source those into the, the TLF programs. So let's go ahead and run everything one by one. So I'm going to run it in the order that it says here, just to follow instructions correctly. ADSL, ADAE, ADADAS, which is uh, our efficacy data sets, ADLBC, and ADTTE. All right. So yeah, as you can see here in our programs, we do call on a lot of our packages, which again, should already have been installed using the RenVlock approach. Uh, so now that all of these packages are installed, these library calls should load them up and then allow them to, allow us then to be able to run all the functions below should depend on these packages. So I'm gonna go ahead and run ADSL first. It's sourcing all the STTM. It's getting the metadata from specifications, which we also submitted. Uh, now, as you can see, it's generated the XPT. Let me show you where this is at. So if we go back to Atom Reviewer, data sets. Uh, so today is June 12th. Um, again, my timestamp is 7.48 a.m., in which case we see ADSL was indeed run just right now, about a minute ago. So we'll go ahead and continue that. Run ADAE. ADADAS, it's a cognitive data set which is a efficacy endpoint in this pilot. Run labs, ADLBC. And then the time to event analysis data set, ADTTE. Hmm. And so, yeah, if anyone, you know, may not be in the industry and, and is working with Atom data sets, uh, Atom data sets are essentially analysis data models, which uh, we are sourcing, which are we are deriving and generating from SDTM study data tabulation models. Uh, study tabulation models look like this. Go in M5, sorry, data sets, tabulations, STTM, uh, and are saved in, in data set, somewhat of a data set structure, but they're tabulation models because they each represent a certain domain in a clinical trial. So, so for instance, AE will capture all adverse events in this domain, CM, concomitant meds, um, LB for labs, EX for exposure, so on and so forth. And there's a lot of information uh, online on the cdisc.org website, which also lay out um, what each of the domains mean. 
Um, from these tabulations, again, we are able to generate the analysis data sets, which then go into the analysis programs to generate the results. So going back to the analysis atom reviewer, we just reran all five of these data sets and looking at, as I was running them, I was looking at any big major errors or warnings that popped up. Uh, and at this time, there are none. We ensured to fix that for this demo. But of course, if you run into those errors or issues, uh, ensure that you go back and fix that. It looks like everything ran OK. So if we go to data sets here, you can see here these are the all five data sets we ran all on June 12th uh, within the last two minutes. All right, so now that the data sets have been generated, we'll go back to the programs and actually run the outputs. So one of the first outputs we tend to run in clinical trials is a demographics table. Uh, this mainly sources ADSL and then gets other baseline characteristics and variables coming from any other domains in SCTM. So you can see here, this is what a demographic table looks like from the analysis that we generated. Go ahead and run efficacy next. Right, so there was no error there. This was written as an RTF file, whereas the demographic table was written as an, an out file. Let's go to the plot. Where this you'll see was generated as a, a PDF. I think the print should be a PDF function here. Um, but yeah, I'll I'll show I'll show it to you in the output folder. And lastly, TLF primary. Which generated the primary endpoint analysis. Great. So here I just uh, essentially demonstrated that after setting up the R, R environment as we've done for the pilot three project during the generation of these analyses, the FDA should be able to then take our package and rerun it, set up the R environment on their end, uh, and run all the outputs successfully. So if I now go to the output folder, you can see all of these were just run a couple minutes ago as well. So again, as you saw, the demographic dot out is shown as a dot out here. Uh, but if we go to our Explorer in Windows, we can see these a bit better in this Explorer. So if I click on the dot out here, it should open in a easy text file. Again, you can see with this timestamp, it was run today. The, you see, this one may not open appropriately in this program. We'll see what it comes out as. I think it's still opening up. I'll go ahead and maybe due to bandwidth and with my video, it's it's slowing down a little bit. Let me see if I can open it in R. All right, it is not opening at this time, but luckily I, I did run all of this yesterday. So let me go into the folder that I ran and ran these in yesterday. Oh, here we go. They're coming up now. There we go. So yeah, so this is, uh, so I showed you the demographic table. This is the KM plot, which you can see with the timestamp today is run. 
The RTF doesn't open quite well in this PDF application. I think it is better run. I think it was this one. If I open it um, in Office. There you go. So the format looks better here. RTF is handled much better in Office. And the TLF primary, I think, is then the last one. And there you go. All right, so I did show you then all four outputs did run successfully. And again, with the, the timestamp uh, showing today's date and run. And at this time, this is then the... end of my my demonstration um, so I'm going back to my my slides here so yeah I, I, again I, I wanted to share how we generated all these analyses uh, for a submission for a clinical trial all using R setting up the R environment so that the reviewer on the other end can execute the analyses and get the same results that we did. Um, some steps I, I may have skipped because due to our time, but you know there are other checks that we would do to ensure that all of the results did come out as they did um, according to what was run in pilot one. I, I would have showed you that, but since I am up close to the hour here, I will stop and give any time back for question and answers for anyone. Um, so yeah. there are a couple of questions in the chat that uh, I'm going to take a look at. Let me see. How do I get? Oh, chat. Here we go. Yeah, so let me answer this. Does FDA require logs of the analysis and, and extraction? If so, how do you extract this? I'm kind of deny. Yeah, that's a good question. So yeah, I guess with SAS, um, when we submit... SAS, SAS does output logs um, generally, but when we submit the, the programs in a submission package, we don't actually include the logs in there. We just include the SAS programs, the outputs that were generated there. Um, and then so long as we tell them the SAS version we used, um, so long as they can re-execute it on their end, uh, they should be able to then see the logs uh, that way. So with the same respect in R, since we don't submit the logs uh, in a SAS submission package, in R, we also don't have logs for R. Um, but any anything that pops up with a run does show up in the in the window pane uh, of the the R in R Studio if any errors do pop up. Um, so what we try to do is ensure that those are fixed before we even submit, uh, so that the logs so the logs somewhat are clean. Uh, so when then they execute it on their end, they don't see those errors or warnings. Um, just joined. Can someone please share the GitHub link? Ah, uh, thank you. Yes. So, th so this is the GitHub link to the general R consortium submissions working group. But for the discussion, uh, let's see, for pilot three, yeah. So this is, the pilot three, Adam, is the area where we developed all of the analyses, but after we developed everything and QC'd everything to its final state, we then saved it in another repo, which I showed you earlier. Let me go ahead and go there and provide that to you. Um, so this is the actual repo which we use to submit to the FDA. Um, so let me put that in here. Yeah. So we, we worked on two repos and you know for any sponsor, um, it's possible they have a development area where they develop all their analyses, but when it comes to their final state, they have to put it in this ECTD structure in order for it to go to uh, FDA for this case. But other health authorities may have other um, instructors they they want 
I think we mm -hmm. need to maybe wrap up to move wrap on up. to the next demo, but you could answer, continue to answer some of these questions in the chat if you can stay on and do that, because this is the same link for the, the link will stay open for the next um, demo. Thank you oh, so I'll much. Of course. Thank you, everyone, for your time. I appreciate it.